Chapter 12. Who are you? Many find their identity in groups they belong to, where they went to school, their family heritage, or the kind of work they do. Our individuality and uniqueness is often expressed in the clothes we wear, our hairstyles, our homes, the kind of things we like to do, and the places we visit. Yet, insecurity challenges everybody at some time of life and can shake the very core of our being, especially if we don't know who we really are inside. Jesus himself made us righteous through his death on the cross. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. When I received Jesus into my life, I was totally changed inside. My spirit became identical to his. I became one with him because he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. That's 1 Corinthians six seventeen. Everything he is, I am in my spirit. For we are as he is in this world. I'm complete in him holy, blameless, and above reproach in his sight. Colossians 2, 10 and 1, 22. Jesus said that it's the Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. You can change the image of yourself for good by meditating on the word until it creates that truth on the inside and by proclaiming that you are the righteousness of God in Christ. The Bible says our faith works when we agree with and say what God says about us in Philemon 1.6. Stop saying negative things about yourself and begin to say, say who you really are. You become like what you behold and are transformed. That's why it's so important to renew your mind with God's word. Nothing disqualifies you from the blessings of God because Jesus' sacrifice released favor and blessings on you. Your identity is in him who loved you and gave himself for you. Galatians 2.20 When you know that you are completely and totally forgiven of your sins, your conscience will be at rest and your heart won't condemn you. You will have confidence toward God when you pray. When Jesus died for you, he not only forgave your sins, but his blood cleansed you from the consciousness of sin as well. You've been forever and completely cleansed and perfected, consecrated and made holy by Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. The blood of Jesus has removed your sins and opened heaven for you. He is your glory, your shield, and the lifter of your head. You are a joint heir with him, and you can reign in this life. Romans 8, 5, 5, 17. You're already accepted and loved and graced with his favor, and you're qualified to receive this inheritance. You're no longer a victim. You're more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ who loves you and gave himself for you. Instead of shame, you will have double honor. Instead of confusion, you will rejoice. God has paid the price to restore health to you and heal you of your emotional wounds. Therefore, you have a bright future. All your needs are supplied according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Blessings are overtaking you. Every earthly grace and favor are coming to you with plenty to give to others. Philippians 4.19 You're an overcomer. By the blood of Jesus, the blood has purged your conscience from dead works to serve him. You're redeemed, justified by his blood, as if you had never sinned. You have peace and victory through the shed blood of Jesus. You will not fear because of the peace of Jesus which he gave you. You don't have to be anxious about anything, but in everything pray with thanksgiving, presenting your request to God. And his peace, 
which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. That doesn't mean anxiety and fear won't try to come against you, but as you choose to speak the word and receive what Jesus has done for you, you will begin to feel the peace of God in your life more and more. And because you are established in righteousness, you are far from oppression and from terror. For you do not fear. It will not come near you. Jesus is your shepherd, your refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. His love drives out all fear in your life. Nothing can separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. You haven't received a spirit of bondage again to fear, but the spirit of adoption, whereby you cry, Abba, Father. God hasn't given you fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. You have been released from the fear of death in which all your life you were subject to bondage, but you're not subject to bondage anymore because Jesus has destroyed him that had the power of death. That is the devil. In the time of trouble, he hides you. You dwell in the secret place of the Most High and abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So say of him, say, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him I will trust. God sent his word to heal you and deliver you from every destruction in your life. And with his stripes, you were and are healed. You're redeemed from every curse and a partaker of his divine nature. Too good to be true? Isaiah 26, 13 says this, O Lord, our God, masters beside you have had dominion over us, but by you only we make mention of your name. They are dead. They will not live. They are deceased. They will not rise. Therefore, you have punished and destroyed them and made all their memory to perish. Colossians 1.13 declares that he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love. These are just a few of the many scriptures that validate who you are in Christ and what he has done for you. Nothing is too hard or impossible with God. He gives you victory over your enemies. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, your faith. And he's given us the faith of Jesus, Galatians 2.20. He always gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ and leads us in triumph in Christ. This is the too good to be true news that Jesus died to give us. Wow. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your limitless love for me and how you have shown me who I really am on the inside because of what Jesus did for me. I do acknowledge every good thing in me in Christ, and I know that you are working on my behalf. Thank you.